The four core CPU or the quad core has evolved a lot since it made its first appearance in 2006. But today, as we continue to see CPU cores rise from numbers like six to eight to 16, and Intel skewing the numbers with their performance and efficiency cores, boasting core counts like 20 and 24, I think it's time to stop getting four core CPUs. In this video, we're gonna go over how the quad core CPU emerged, why they were so good, the beginning of the end for the quad core and why I'm finally gonna upgrade mine. So let's talk about how we got to the infamous four core CPU in the first place. Before quad core CPUs were released, popular CPUs at the time were dual cores such as the Intel Core 2 Duo, the Pentium D, AMD's Athlon 64X2 and FX series. But this was all until November of 2006 when we, for the first time, got a quad-core desktop CPU. And this CPU was the Intel Core 2 Extreme QX6700, which cost a whopping $1,000, solidifying itself as one of the best CPUs of its time. This Kentsfield processor was on the LGA775 socket and had a base frequency of 2.66 gigahertz. Two months later, in January of 2007, we got a more consumer-friendly quad-core the Core 2 Quad Q6600. The more price-friendly option costing $530, which would soon become an iconic CPU across tech enthusiasts. This CPU was also a Kentsfield processor on the LGA775 socket with a base frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. But it wasn't until 10 months after the release of the Q6600 that AMD would show up to the quad-core party. In November of the same year, AMD debuted their Phenom, Phenom, X4, 9500 and 9600. Two quad-core Agena CPUs on the AM2 Plus socket with the 9500 having a 2.2 GHz base frequency and the 9600 having a 2.3 GHz. But they didn't gather as much interest due to Intel's success of the Core 2 Quad and the Core 2 Extreme QX processors and an unfortunate backlash around a TLB issue on some of these CPUs. Since AMD's first quad-core CPUs released a year after Intel released theirs, the anticipated Phenom X4 processors didn't gain as much popularity due to Intel holding the market share for quad-core processors with a one-year advantage over AMD. Quad-cores were gaining popularity, but they hadn't hit their peak just yet. For me, I think the peak of quad-core CPUs was from 2012 to 2016, during Ivy Bridge, Haswell, and Skylake, where the four-core eight-thread CPU just worked. In fact, Intel milked the four-core eight-thread combo for six generations of high-end CPUs, with the i7-9600, 2600K, 3770K, 4770K, 6700K, and 7700K. A massive part to all of this success was the hyperthreading. The CPUs with hyperthreading definitely age better than the ones without. Like those overclocked i5, like the 7600K, 6600K, that were pretty expensive when they first came out too. But now let's fast forward to 2017, where we began to see the beginning of the end for the quad core. In January of 2017, Intel released their KB Lake CPUs, which included their anticipated i7-7700K, a four-core, eight-thread CPU. But hold on, we were just looking at CPUs from seven years ago and they had four cores. You're telling me that seven years later, we still have four cores? Yes, that's right. But to be fair, this CPU was one of the best when it was released. It had great core speeds against its key competitor that showed up to the party two months later, which was the Ryzen 7 1000 series. Eight core 16 thread CPUs, which were AMD's flagship that doubled the cores and threads of the i7 7700K. Now, while the 7700K was pretty much the better of the two, in certain comparisons with Ryzen, the 7700K's core count was letting it down. During the time of release, everyone acknowledged that the 7700K was the best for gaming and it outperformed the 1700. But there was a lot of discussion that when streaming, Ryzen's performance didn't degrade as much as Intel's, and this was due to their higher core count. A lot of enthusiasts and AMD fanboys also mentioned that for editing, rendering, and more intensive tasks, Ryzen wins. And if you chose the 7700K like me, for the time, that was still fine. It was still one of the best CPUs of the time. 
My issue with it was that it felt like an underwhelming upgrade from the i7 6700K. And with their fast single core speeds, it would have been excellent to see Intel give it more cores, at least a six core processor, which they eventually did with the i7 8700K, which was great. But in terms of how well it aged, that's a different story. I'm one of the suckers that still have this CPU today and I actually do use it. And my main problem is with video editing. It's mainly just trying to scrub along the timeline and it's really hard to see some transitions unless I just render the entire video. Here is my PC. I've just opened up my video editor, but first I'd just like to confirm that this is the 7700K we're working with. And I'm just gonna have all these CPU stats on the next cam just overlaid to show you while we're doing some just brief like editing what is actually happening. So just know like the CPU load is just going up a lot as I begin to scrub and it's not keeping up all too well in time like all the comments po popping up you see temperatures going up it does lag behind a bit. One bit notably for me was this section. I'm just gonna try to this PC Ooh. once and for all. This PC was sitting in my closet broken. Notice the delay in the sound as it's trying to transition because the idea of the clip is it's going from here, waiting, waiting, all that time waiting. It's going from this clip to there. See, wait, wait, now it's actually on it, that delay. And there's a, like, you know, I'm putting like sound effects and stuff like on, just try watch it. I'll just try show you this so you can try understand what I'm talking about. So there's a sound for the transition and there's a, just a little pop noise. Just see if you can notice it, the delay in real time. Being in my closet broken for three months. So I had to wake up from its sleep. See, we went, we didn't even see this pop up in time. It just came up all at once. It's supposed to come through like this and then pop and then thing comes up. It's a bit of a delay. That's, that's all I'm talking about. This is, this is my main issue with the thing. Now, I'm not an idiot. I'm willingly using a seven-year-old CPU. I know it's not gonna be the best. However, it did raise the question to me that four cores is probably not enough, and CPUs like the i7-7700K didn't age well. And today, the current i7-14700K has been ridden of its four cores and now boasts 20 cores, with eight performance cores, 12 efficiency cores, and 28 threads. And the quad core has now been handed down to the current i3s. A 2024 i3 14100 will come with four cores and eight threads. And this tells me that Intel has given the i3 the i7's hand-me-downs because it no longer fits Big Brother i7. And to put this into comparison, if we go back to 2017 when KB Lake was released, we knew the i7 7700K had four cores and eight threads. But the i3-7100 of the same generation had two cores and four threads. And I'm not trying to hate on the i3 for having four cores. I'm basically just saying for high-end performance, four cores doesn't cut it anymore. And in all fairness, those i3s are actually pretty good and make great budget gaming PCs. It's definitely an upgrade from my 7700K. So... To sum everything up, Intel definitely dragged the 4-core, 8-thread blueprint at least one generation longer than they should have. While they were good for their time, they just didn't age well due to their core count. They were the first to come up with the quad-core, and it would have been great to see them push the standard again, but AMD clearly learnt their lesson after being late to the quad-core party in 2007. I'm actually about to upgrade my 7700K, so I just thought it would be fitting to make a video about the four core CPU, just go over it and its dynasty while so good. And please like and subscribe if you wish to. I'm actually gonna be making a video about upgrading this CPU and what I'm gonna upgrade it to, all that sort of stuff. So if you wanna see that, subscribe for more. But otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.